Welcome! In this video clip, we will look at the multiplication strategy called breaking factors into smaller factors. This strategy develops students' fluency, knowing that they can compose and decompose numbers flexibly and efficiently to solve problems. It also helps them understand that the properties of numbers, in this case the associative property, can be applied to help them multiply fluently. This is one of the most advanced multiplication strategies and should be taught toward the end of your multiplication unit after teaching several other strategies, such as the partial product strategy or making friendly numbers. Similar to the partial product strategy, this approach allows students to make smaller problems to help them solve more difficult ones. This strategy directly relates to the computational fluency standards that require students to use their knowledge of number relationships to multiply fluently. The breaking factors into smaller factor strategy teaches students that factors in a multiplication problem can be decomposed into groups of factors that are easier to compute. Once students recognize this, they can realize that the order they choose to multiply the factors in can be manipulated to allow them to work with the facts that they are most comfortable with. This strategy is most useful when factors become larger and one of the factors can be changed to a one-digit multiplier. The breaking factors into smaller factors strategy is meant to be a mental math strategy. However, when initially introducing this strategy, it will be helpful for students to use base 10 blocks, arrays, and whiteboards to illustrate the number relationships. Now I will model introducing the breaking factors into smaller factors strategy for students. Boys and girls, sometimes we're asked to solve a multiplication problem that has tricky numbers in it that are larger than the basic facts that we know. So let's say we are trying to solve the problem 25 times 8. Hmm, well let's see. I know that that 8 can be decomposed or broken up into 4 times 2. And that would make my new problem 25 times 4 times 2. Now I also know that the associative property allows me to change the order of the factors that I'm multiplying. So I can change the order of those factors and make my new problem 2 times 25 times 4. That means that I have two groups of 25 times 4. Well, let's see. I know that 25 times 4 equals 100. Those numbers are easy for me to work with because I know that 25 is the value of a quarter and I know that it takes four quarters to make a dollar or 100 cents. So I've used some numbers that are easier for me to work with to solve that problem. Okay, now let's go back to the original problem. If I have two groups of 25 times 4 and I know that 25 times 4 equals 100, then I have two groups of 100, which equals 200. So by breaking my problem into factors that are easier for me to work with, I made this more difficult problem easier to solve. Let's look at another example using this same expression. So again, I'm going to start with the expression 25 times 8. Only this time, I see that 25 is a two-digit multiplier. Ooh, I don't know any two-digit multipliers in terms of basic facts. So this time, I'm going to decompose that 25 into 5 times 5, and then I'm still going to multiply by 8. So my new problem becomes 5 times 5 times 8. Well then, using the associative property, once again, I can change the order of my multipliers to make it easier for me to multiply. So, I'm going to turn my problem into 5 times 8 times 5. I know that 5 times 8 equals 40, because that's one of my basic facts, and my 5's facts are pretty easy for me to solve. So I know that 5 times 8 equals 40. Hmm. Well, that means I'm left with 40 times 5. Well, let's see. That 40 is still a two-digit multiplier, so I want to break it down a little bit more. So I'm going to decompose the 40 now into 4 times 10. So then my problem becomes 4 times 10 times 5. Well, I know that 4 times 5 times 10, when I look at some of those factors, I know that 4 times 5 equals 20, 
and then I'm left with 20 times 10, which would give me the 200. So that's another way using this same expression of 25 times 8 to use facts that I'm more comfortable with to help me solve a more complex problem. Now that we know that we can break factors into smaller factors, we can use that strategy to help us make multiplication easier. When we're multiplying larger numbers, we can make the numbers easier to work with by decomposing them into smaller numbers or by grouping the factors in a different order. When introducing this strategy, it's best to start with very simple examples so the students can easily see the number relationships. It's also helpful to use quantities that students are comfortable breaking apart. For example, students routinely decompose 100 when they're working with money. If you're using one of the Cumberland County number talks related to this strategy, be sure to first acknowledge all strategies that students share. You may then emphasize the breaking factors into smaller factors strategy as an efficient way to work with multiplication numbers. Thank you.